If you're taking meds to manage your type 2 diabetes or prediabetes, there's a very good chance you're taking metformin. Of course, metformin is not what will be on your pillbox. This is the generic name of the drug. The pillbox you have will reflect the trade name, and there's lots of options. Now, metformin is not the only oral hyperglycemic on the market, but Currently, it's the drug of choice, although this might be changing. In metformin's favor, it's relatively safe and cheap. It's been around for years. In fact, it has proved so useful in type 2 diabetics, it has acquired a fan club, extending its prescription to a range of pathologies, and some healthy peeps take it to cheat father time. So, how does metformin work? Well, believe it or not, despite being around for years and being a key component of the anti-diabetes toolkit, it's still a bit of a mystery. Pharmacology textbooks often attribute its magic to its ability to inhibit complex 1 inside the mitochondria. Translated into plain English, It breaks the little furnaces that provide cells with the energy they need to do things. And this triggers an energy crisis inside the cell, spearheaded by an enzyme called AMP kinase. The body scrambles to fix the problem, and somehow everyone lives happily ever after. Now, part of the happily ever after involves the liver producing less glucose. Of course, there are some holes in the theory, the most most notable being one of the primary problems, if not the primary problem in someone with type 2 diabetes, is the fuel is not being burned. This is why things run high. Sugar, LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, free fatty acids, branched chain amino acids, you get the picture. The cells are not short of resources per se. Mm, So the idea of metformin breaking the broken is a bit of a disconnect. Now, to be fair, the thinking is that burning less has benefits because it lowers oxidative stress. Hmm, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out. This cannot be the whole story. So what is the story and why do we need to figure it out? Well. Metformin has the potential to lead the way. The biggest benefit of unpacking what metformin is doing is we would be one step closer to figuring out what is really going wrong in insulin resistance and be better able to treat people suffering from the affliction. But more importantly, stop others from sliding into this devastating body chemistry pattern. I think there's been a breakthrough on the how metformin lowers sugar levels front. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we follow metformin to the promised land. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, the story begins with fructose. This is the natural sugar found in fruit, but it has been perverted by technology to become a major component of ultra-processed foods, where it appears as high fructose corn syrup. It seems that metformin is targeting fructose. Now, a team of American researchers treated 18-week-old ordinary mice with oral metformin for two weeks. Now, the mice in the study were not fat and diabetic. And if you're thinking, what is this with the needle? You said oral. Unfortunately, the mice do not simply swallow their meds with breakfast. Getting metformin in was a procedure. Now, the official term for what was done is a gavage. It involves forcibly delivering the drug to the stomach. Not a pleasant experience all around, but very necessary because the research team wanted to study what metformin was doing in the intestine. 
important thanks to previous research, they had a hunch that this was very important. Now, metformin does magic. Seriously, despite the fact that the mice were not diabetic, the metformin-treated mice showed improvements in their glucose tolerance. Go metformin! Following the two-week treatment with a dose of metformin designed to mimic the plasma level seen in humans, our team took a look at what had happened in the intestinal tissue. Specifically, they explored the chemicals related to, to fructose metabolism. Now, fructose enters enterocytes. These are the cells lining the gut via a different gate from glucose. The gate that fructose uses is the GLUT5 gate. Once inside, the enzyme fructose kinase quickly throws a phosphate on to make sure that the fructose doesn't change its mind and escape. This process creates a chemical called fructose 1-phosphate. The team noted significantly less fructose 1-phosphate was formed in the intestinal tissue when metformin was around, suggesting that the fructose was not making it inside. So what? Well, under normal circumstances, the fructose that is taken up by the enterocytes is turned into glucose. And when our team tested for intestinal glucose, they found it was significantly lower. And this, quite possibly, is the magic of metformin. You see, we see the problem in type 2 diabetes as too little insulin. What is not always appreciated when someone is battling to control their sugar levels is part of the problem is there is too much sugar. Now, there's the sugar coming with dinner on top of the sugar the body is producing to ensure the brain and other delicate bits are adequately fueled. Insulin is meant to turn off endogenous glucose production. When you're insulin resistant, insulin fails to do this. This is actually why low-carb diets are so beneficial, because less sugar coming in means that the insulin that is around is not scrambling to handle all the extra sugar. Metformin stops glucose production, not in the liver, but in the intestine. Of course, this begs the question, what happens to the fructose that the enterocytes pass on? Well, one possibility is that they end up in the liver, which would not be a good thing because thanks to fructose's chemistry, it could be turned into fat and cause the liver a whole lot of unhappiness. In fact, this is what happens when you drink sugar-laden beverages on an empty stomach. The good news is, it didn't happen. Metformin protects the liver from too much fructose too. Implying that the fructose becomes the colon's problem. All the unabsorbed fructose arrives on the menu of the hordes of bacteria living in the colon. But fructose is an acquired taste. There are species of bacteria that love it, but they are not in the majority. So initially, the unabsorbed fructose can make for unpleasant tummy rumbles because it disrupts the colonic water balance. This probably explains why the vast majority of people experience gastrointestinal side effects such as diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, abdominal discomfort and flatulence when they first start taking metformin. It's caused by the excess unabsorbed fructose in the colon. Those who push through the tummy upsets find the problem subsides as the gut flora adapts to the changes in food sources. This research implicates fructose in the pathology of metabolic disturbances. Now it's not a new idea, and it's probably not as simple as fructose causes metabolic disease. My guess is something goes wrong in the intestine. But based on this finding, it's probably safe to conclude too much fructose in the intestine is not healthful. And if you're metabolically challenged, it would probably be prudent to minimize fructose spikes in the intestine. Fortunately, this is not so hard to do. If you are diabetic, do not use fructose as your sugar substitute and cut back on the consumption of highly processed foods. 
High fructose corn syrup is often an ingredient. Also, don't drink your fructose, especially on an empty stomach. Now, fructose is not just found in the bad sugar-laden beverages. It pops up in the good sugar-laden beverages too. Think orange juice and smoothies. Now, the final suggestion, and one that may be a little bit controversial, is opt for more vegetables and less fruit in your regular day-to-day -day diet. Natural fructose is still fructose. Want to learn more about the biology of fructose? Click through to the library page on the Better Body Chemistry blog and begin the journey today to creating better body chemistry and better health. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science not high. Know someone who's diabetic? Share this video with them so they get a little insight into how metformin fixes things. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.